morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Time for the school of the Holy Spirit. You know what time it is. Let's go. Let's get in here in Jesus' mighty name. He'll never change from eternity. Come on in. <laughs> good morning. Hallelujah. Hey. Good morning, IG. Let's go. Good morning, Zoomers. God bless you. Oh, yes, we are live from the DMV. We are excited about it. Come on in. Come on in. I got on my Holy Spirit Activate shirt. I'm so excited. And ever, he is the same. He'll never change. Come on in. Come on in to eternity. We're not live in our studio in Detroit, but we are live on location. And we're learning how to get it done. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. Listen, if you're in the DMV area, you want to meet me tomorrow night at Ebenezer AME. It is a one night men's revival. I am looking for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Bring your men, bring your sons, bring your husbands, bring them because it's very important that they would be a part of the end time with God. I'm going to be talking about the a man's a male man's place in the move of God. What is the male man's place in a in the move of God? Particularly the end time move of God. I want to lay out what God has laid out for me. Come on in as you're coming in. We are coming through this cold. Come on. Praise him. Come on. Come on in. Oh my God. Like, tag, and share. Good morning, Deborah Brown. Good morning, Felicia Weatherspoon. Good morning, Wanda Sue Michelle. Patricia A. Scott, you're hanging with me. Joyce Johnson, good morning. Mary Ann Patterson, Martha Boss. Those of you that's uh, in the Philadelphia area and up here, drive on in. But Ebenezer went tomorrow night. Amen. Make a road trip. It's going to be worth it. I'm looking for a move of God in the point of Holy Spirit like never before. Ebenezer, uh, we have a special, special history together. So you don't want to miss it if you're able. And if you're not in the area, join us online. It will be on online. Also, a big shout out to Life Changing Church, this 25 year anniversary to every deacon, to every elder, every usher, every hospitality person, every driver, um, audio and video, children's ministry, church uh, youth ministry. Um, those of you that clean the building, photography, to every person's findings uh, that has been with us to build that church, praise and worship, musicians. Uh, it takes so much. Givers, tithers, uh, friends, families, partners. Thank you. 25 years. Oh, but listen, there will be glory after this. There will be glory after this. Come on in. God bless you. Hey, Camilla Cook, LaShawn, good morning. Rhonda Dooley, God bless you. I missed you. Coming back up. Kathleen Parks and Finley. Uh, Chris, Chris, good morning, Mama Pearl. Praise God. You got your rest? Rebel Phantom. Diana Morrow, let's go. Hey, Pastor Kelly. Kelly Lane, God bless you. Love you. Uh, hey, Barbara Essence, I'm in your area. Joe Folsom, good morning, Pastor. I'll see you again. Herb Jackson, oh my God. Look, would you please tell her, uh, tell the audio people, I don't know if I've said it, I may have forgot the title, the subject for Sunday is there will be glory after this. Will be glory after this. Dr. Patricia Jackson, there will be glory after this. You get a significant mark. There will be glory after this. Come on in and join us this morning as you
who are coming in. I am so excited about what God is doing and what God is saying. This is a very critical time. A very, very critical time. Good morning, good evening, Dr. Patricia A. Thomas. Good morning, Mary Ann Patterson. And yes, this weekend, I'll be in New York for the Shook Conference. That's Friday and Saturday. Yes, yes, thank you for that, uh, Mary Ann Patterson. <laughs> Women's Retreat this Friday, the Shook Retreat there. I'm excited about that. As well, I have been just preparing and praying and just know that the Lord has a word for the people of God there in the New York area. Uh, the Shook Conference, November and 10th, uh, you don't want to miss that. Fellowship Covenant Church, uh, 720 Castle Hill Avenue, Bronx, New York. I'll be there with Dr. Reverend Dr. Eaton and the Shug Conference. That's Friday and Saturday. So we'll travel on Thursday uh, <laughs> from Ebenezer on Wednesday, and uh, we will make our way to the Shug Conference. I'm excited. Holy Spirit is doing something phenomenal. This is a critical time. Somebody put that in the chat. This is a critical time. In the sphere of kingdom, in the sphere of what God is doing, this is a very critical time. And I don't want you to miss it by being somewhere not well, not maturing, not embracing all that God is doing. This is a critical moment. This is a pivotal. This is the moment where you and I cannot afford to be off. You and I cannot afford to be off. That's why today I wore my, let me see if y'all can see my shirt. Holy Spirit activate. I had to wear it. Wear my shirt. Holy Spirit activate. Holy Spirit activate. Activate, activate, Holy Spirit, activate. Good morning, H uh, I G uh, Instagram. Why is the iPhone so much clearer than and the Zoom so much clearer than my laptop? Does this mean I need a, 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 a computer uh, from uh, Apple? Lord Jesus, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Oh my God, the camera is so clear. Listen, I want to say this to you and I'm not going to let it go. We got to get healed, folks. You got to get well. You got to get healed. You got to do a better job at going through what it is that you have to go through. This is a time uh, to move forward. This is a time uh, for you to separate yourself from all foolishness, uh, from all foolishness. Yesterday, uh, well, this past week, uh, you all know that I've been fighting this bug and um, I've been, I've, I've just, I've carried it now for about four weeks. So I've gone to certain, you know, I, I was in Houston, gone to certain places. I wear my mask on the plane. You all have been praying, Adventures to Kiba and others, you intercessors have been really praying for me. And um, yet I have really um, still seemingly not got better, gotten any better. And so I've just been praying and praying and um, Houston, I saw my doctor there, Dr. Sabrina, and just praying and praying, got a little bit better, got home to Detroit, did some home remedies, and um, got a little better, but just good enough to travel. But um, Sunday night after, well, even going into Sunday, just, you know, knew I wasn't crossing that line that I needed to cross. So um, 
Holy Spirit said, you need a breathing treatment. This is yesterday morning. Holy Spirit said, you need a breathing treatment. And I said, right, because I can, I can tell that my lungs were compromised. My breathing, my, my oxygen levels were not good. And uh, I could tell Sunday night, uh, my breathing was was not labored, but I needed to pay attention to it. And so um, Holy Spirit said, you need a breathing treatment. Just as clear, just, just you need a breathing treatment. And the doctor said, you need a chest x-ray. So I found an urgent care in the area right across the bridge in Arlington and um, took an Uber and got there. And one of my daughters from Life Changing, Sister Michelle Cottom, uh, came to be with me. And when I walked in and the doctor, uh, the nurse began to triage me. Mm. The doctor's coming right in. And um, he said to me, he said, um, I can't even take a chest x-ray because your breathing is so labored and your lungs are compromised. So I'm going to give you a breathing treatment. And I just sat there and I said, Holy Spirit, you know everything about everything. So after I got the breathing treatment, about 30 minutes, it gave me like a double, double dose. I could feel my lungs opening up. And uh, then I went and had the chest x-ray. The doctor came in. And I already, the Holy Spirit had already told me what was happening. And because when I get in these cold areas, when I get a cold, it usually lingers. And then I go to a bronchitis. And then ultimately, I go to a pneumonia. And of course, uh, that's what when he came back in, he said, uh, you're walking pneumonia. And I said, okay. So I'm going to you, give you a shot. And um, you're going to go home and rest. I'm going to upgrade your meds. And um, he said, you're a very spiritual woman, aren't you? I said, yes, sir, I am. He was a uh, Middle Easterner. He said, I felt God's presence when I came in the room with you. He said, when I went back to look at your x-rays, God said to take good care of you. Somebody, some, somebody say this, this Holy Ghost. Somebody say this Holy Ghost. Hey, Apostle Donald, God bless you, precious. Global Apostle, I tell you, God has been so faithful. He said, you're very spiritual Woman, Apostle Roberts. John is in this area too. Give me a call, tell him. And uh, he said, you're a very spiritual woman, aren't you? I said, yes, I am. He said, I, I felt the presence of God when I came in the room. And when I went back, I'm repeating it because I want you to hear it. When I went back to look at your x rays God said, take good care of you. You come back tomorrow, get another breathing treatment. He said, your lungs are not are opening, but I want to open them more. This Holy Ghost. Somebody say that. This Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost. This is a Middle Easterner. I don't know if he was Chaldean or Muslim. I didn't inquire. He said enough. And when he said, I'm going to give you a breathing treatment. And the Holy Spirit has said, you need a breathing treatment. Now, I'm saying this to share with you. Uh, yes, Kiani. I'm sharing with you, Evangelist Tish, Donald McIntosh, this Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost is essential your hearing and your obedience. I heard evangelists to keep up praying this morning. Give us ears to obey. Give us ears to obey. This Holy Ghost, Yvonne Reynolds, this Holy Ghost, 
of those of you that come in on Zoom, my IG family, this Holy Ghost, write that, write it again. This Holy Ghost, uh, Thea, this Holy Ghost, Tawana, this Holy Ghost, this was even necessary, not just for me, but for him. Absolutely. He said, you are very spiritual woman, aren't you? Came in and said, I'm going to give you a shot. And um, I know about that. He said, you need some penicillin. Because you only know erythromycin. And I had a Z-pack. I didn't add all. He's like, you need penicillin. Now, I'm a nurse, so I know protocols for certain things. When they give you that penicillin shot, you know. Now, I'm sharing, I'm sharing this to let you know Holy Spirit is essential in this hour. This Holy Ghost, your relationship cannot be obscured in any way, in the least. You cannot, Apostle Jimerson, we cannot. This is not the hour to have offense, unforgiveness. This is not the hour to be holding a grudge, to be living in trauma, to be an unrepentant believer. This is not that hour. Because down to the finest details, this Holy Ghost, come on over, see Lanita. Princess, it's essential. Your relationship, your fellowship, your ability to hear is critical for your life, Apostle Cunningham. This is not the hour to be self-destructive. Somebody hear me. I am leaning on this more powerful, more stronger than ever. That you and I cannot afford to be the slightest bit in error in any area of our lives. In our thinking, in our hearing in our seeing, in our speaking, this is not the hour to be in an area of error in any area. Clean up your relationships. Correct the areas of misalignment. If you have ought with anyone, if you have not done what you know or you did what you did correct it correct it because now we must hear at a deeper level we must now hear at a deeper level one of my sons uh in the ministry bishop cousins uh, and when my, my my folks reach out to me, I hear, I have to hear. And I shared some things with Bishop. And I can see and hear, and I only speak, but I, and I'm not a prophet, I am not, but I hear and I can see. I said some things to him and Friday, I believe it was. Mother, he said, everything you said is... Now, I, I just need you to understand. Lives are in the balance. And when you are filled with Holy Spirit, when you are spirit baptized, you can't be messy. You can't be manipulative. You, you can't be uh, uh, in things uh, that are, are blatantly wrong. And, and one of the things that God speaks to me, I speak to leaders. I speak to leaders. 
I speak to leaders, clean it up, correct it, and clear it out. Come on, shot. I just want to issue a warning. Holy Spirit is revealing the nuggets and dropping downloads that will save lives. That will save lives. Come on, I need you to share this. I need you to share this now. I need you to understand that this is not the hour for you to be in any way angry or not, not well in any area. This is not the hour. Holy Spirit is dropping downloads and instructions that will save lives. Clean it up, people. Correct it. You cannot be messy and manipulative. You cannot be in ministry and you are messy. You can't be in God and you are messy and manipulative and reactive. This is not that hour. And that comes from the lack of spiritual maturity. Ain't nobody fornicating now. Ain't nobody lying. What? What are you doing? What are you sacrificing? Ain't nobody. What? Ain't nobody not submitted to leadership now? Ain't nobody not going to church now? Ain't nobody not committed? Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean it up. Don't let 2023 catch you with your work undone. This is not the hour for immaturity. What are you chasing? What is it that is a priority for you? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, LaShawn. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Terry. Seek ye first, Gwendolyn Foster, Diana Morrow, Barbara Enoch. Don't get distracted in this last quarter. Don't let something become so important, so you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things, Tracy Hartgrove, <coughs> will be added unto you. And right about this time, you're going to have to be mindful of the pride of life. The pride of life. The pride, listen, I know business. I know multi-level. I know the money. I know the opportunity. But if you're doing more over there, then you're doing for the church of Jesus Christ. Then switch the priorities. Switch it. Switch it. Because it puts in you the incentive of money. The money is the incentive to recruit to build, to recruit, to build. Well, we don't offer you money to build the church of Jesus, but eternal life. If you're recruiting more people to your business, then you are recruiting to the kingdom of God. Switch your priorities. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, come on, apostle. I'd rather have God than greed and grudges. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know this. I, I'm, I'm in politics. I'm in the political sphere. I'm in education. I'm in that. And I know it, it, it is consuming. God has you where he has you. And when you get there, it may not be comfortable. 
you may not even like it, but you ought to still realize that God is testing your pride of life. Pride of life, pride of life, which is self-destruction. I don't like the way they make me feel. I'm uncomfortable. I, I, my ego, I'm not getting the support. I'm not getting the help. I, they don't like me here. I get it. I get it. But your immaturity is showing. Your ego is showing. You are, you are being tested in the pride of life. And you are not cognizant that this is the one area where you self-destruct. You don't self-destruct with the lust of the flesh. You always got to bring somebody else in. You don't self-destruct with the lust of the eye. You always got to involve somebody else. But the pride of life, you jump out of something that God allowed you to go in to test you, to see what was in your heart, to see what it is. Your ego is showing. You are emotional because this test, this area is scratching your area of immaturity, your ego, your emotions, how you are being made to feel, how you are being talked about, how you are being mishandled, and you are so consumed by it that you don't realize that your ego is going to cause you to not pass this test oh god oh god i don't know why we think comfort i don't know why we think when god is stretching when god is building capacity it is uncomfortable I was, I was looking at this scripture, and I want you to get your paper Bible. We're going to go back to Luke 4. But before we go back to Luke 4, I want you to go over to Hebrews. I want you to go to Hebrews with me. And um, I want to talk about this verse 4. And we're going to look at Hebrews 12. Get your paper Bible. Get your paper. This is where your ego causes you to, because you're uncomfortable. This is where you, this is it. You're uncomfortable. It's your ego that has have us chase money. It's our ego that has us chase affirmation. It's our ego that, that wants us to chase everything but the kingdom of God. It's amazing. We can put all that time into business. Growing our businesses, growing this, growing that. And don't put any time in growing the church. Hebrews 12 and 4. Watch this. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. I love that. <laughs> and you have completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a parent addresses their child it says my son do not make light of the lord's discipline now let me just go back because you don't think it's god testing you you think that the people are mistreating you you think that the system is is mistreat no it is the lord so Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Who am I talking to? 
Pastor John Davis. Come on, Valerie Thomas. Let's go. Don't feel sorry for yourself. That's that's what you you you're feeling sorry for yourself that you're in that test. You're feeling sorry for yourself. You're feeling like I don't deserve this. I don't want to do this. This is too much for me. Now you're emotionally reacting. You feeling sorry for yourself? Why he? Why he do that? Why? Why? Why my 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 boss say that to me? Why? Why? Why this happened in my marriage? Why am I sick? Why? Why did this happen to my church? Why didn't my church recover? What is? No, you're feeling sorry for yourself. You're feeling sorry for yourself. And you have forgotten that the Lord's discipline, don't shrug off the Lord's discipline. Don't be crushed by it either. That's what the message says. It's the child that he loves that he disciplines. The child that he embraces, he corrects. God is educating you. It's your ego. You, he, you don't pray to get God to do what you want him to do. You pray that you that he might reveal his will for you. We are immature. We are pouting, stomping, door slamming, sticking out our tongues, children. You will not suffer unto blood. Evelyn Holmes, we will not. We're not giving up blood. Speaking to one of my elders the other night. What, what is going on here? Oh my God, the immaturity. And I said, I'm very disappointed, but I'm going to get you through this. I, 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 I'm, I'm just like, oh my God. And, and there are areas where you seem to excel. There are areas where you are blowing up. I, I rely on you. And now you're in the test. And this is you? I couldn't. I said, no. Now, come on, you gotta, you, you gotta take this. You gotta take this. Maturity, spiritual maturity is how do you handle life's situations and life's life? How do you handle it? Do you rely on your, your ego? You rely on your emotions? Or do you rely on the Holy Spirit? Look what the text says. It says, don't feel sorry for yourself. It said, dear child, don't shrug off God's discipline. And don't be crushed by it either. Don't let your ego, don't get crushed. He's not going to do it your way. He's not obligated to do it your way. Don't let your ego get in the way of the discipline don't let your feelings teach you a lesson in this hour god is educating you that's why you should never drop out of the test oh god who am i talking to who am i talking to here listen to what it says so endure the hardship as discipline i'm in seven God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their parents? And if you are not disciplined and everyone goes through discipline, the word for discipline in the Greek is testing, tested. It's the same Greek word. Then you are not legitimate. And you are not true sons or daughters at all. Moreover, we all have had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirit and live? 
They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us or tests us for good in order that we may share in his holiness. <laughs> this is Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews 12. Listen to this now. I mean, verse 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness. Your embarrassment, your ego, your mistake, the lack of discipline. You, you lost your temper. You got angry. You got mad. You cussed. You walked around snooty. It's all right. You're being tested by God. But it produces a harvest of righteousness. Listen to this. And peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. My husband died. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But how are you responding? I lost my child. I'm, I'm sorry. But how are you responding? I lost my church. I lost my ministry. I lost my marriage. I'm sorry. But how are you being trained by this? And how are you responding to the training? How am I responding? How am I growing? How am I maturing? Did I emerge full of the spirit? Come on, come on. Have I emerged at all? And have I emerged full of the power of the spirit? Did I come out angry? Did I come out mad? Did I come out weak and feeble? Oh, no, am I dragging my feet? Am I, am I still not, not um, rejoicing in the Lord? Am I still sluggish? How did I emerge? We are being tested. We are being trained. We are being disciplined. But it is to produce the harvest of righteousness. <laughs> that we might share in his holiness. Oh, Rabbi Kashkata, Rabbi Oshkata. How are you responding, folks? Yeah, are you relying on all this? Let's go, let's go to Hebrews 5 for just a moment. Hebrews chapter number 5. Hebrews 5. I'm going, just, just hang with me. I'm going somewhere. Hebrews chapter number 5. And you, you all who know the scriptures, I see my son, Pastor David Johnson. God bless your son, one of our premier young pastors. Uh, I see you. Cheryl Wilson, come on in. Ron Johnson, come on, son. Felicia Hodge, how, how are you responding? Listen to this. During the days, I'm in seven, five of Hebrews, verse seven. During the days of the life, of Jesus on the earth. He offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from the things that he suffered. And once made perfect or once developed or once matured, Rochelle, we're talking about Jesus now. Once he was matured, look at here. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> this message will break it down and help you. Though he was God's son, he learned trusting and obedience by what he suffered. 
and having arrived at the full stature of his maturity, he became a source of eternal salvation to all who believingly obey in him. I want you to put this in, I want you to put this in the chat. Watch the pride of life as the demon that is tormenting the saints. That is the spirit that is tormenting the saints. That is the spirit that is tormenting. Some of y'all need deliverance because you don't want to take ownership for your own lack of submission to God. Some stuff is happening because you're being tested to be mature in the Lord. And some stuff is happening because of poor choices, bad decisions. Watch. Put it in the chat. Watch for the pride of life. Let's go back to Luke 4. Let's watch. Let's, let's go back to Luke 4. And I want to keep going back to this because this is our principal text. Verse 1, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. Look at the conditions. Look at the surrounding conditions. He was hungry. He'd been fasting. He just had this amazing encounter where he was baptized in water and then baptized with the Holy Spirit. Everybody saw him go in the water when John took him down. Everybody saw him come up out of the water. Everybody that was watching saw the glorious descending of Holy Spirit upon him. So right there, his water baptism, his spirit baptism at the same time, and the affirmation of the voice of the Father that declares, this is my beloved son. You, It don't get no better than that. I'm standing in the water baptized, fulfilling all righteousness. The crowd is watching. I'm submitted to the Father. And now the Father, the promise of the Father, releases Holy Spirit. I'm baptized in water, baptized in Holy Spirit. Now, watch this. Four and one. He's at the pinnacle, man. This It don't get no better than this. And everybody is watching. Wow. 30 years old. Getting ready to enter into full-time ministry. And then Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. See, I, I got I gotta know. I gotta know. You gotta know that you can pass these tests. The lust of the Flesh was the first thing that Satan tempted him with. Because I know you're hungry. The lust of the eye was the second test. I'm going to show you all of the kingdoms of the world. And you can have them if you bow down. But I'm going to show it to you. Then he says... <laughs> I know, chief. <laughs> like, really? This when you're going to take me in the wilderness? <laughs> like, really? Now, he says, destroy yourself. Destroy yourself. He takes him to the height of Jerusalem. Now, remember, Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Remember, he's full of the Spirit. Remember, he's baptizing the Spirit. But now he's led by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. You can't pray yourself out of that. 
You got to go through it. You got to stop dropping out. You got to stop uh, submitting resignations and stop quitting when you don't like the choir director no more. You don't like the pastor no more. That's the pride of life. That's the pride of life. When you leave your church because somebody said something to you. When you leave, you, you leave your position because you didn't like the way something was preached. That's the pride of life. When you are a chairperson or you they made something over the women or something over this or something over an event and you get your feelings in it. It's the pride of life that makes you angry. It's the pride of life that says you can't take a rebuke. You can't take leadership to get over on you. It's a pride of life when you had a plan, but it wasn't God's plan. And not, and he's not going to do it. And you just sulk and get mad. It's the pride of life. It's the pride of life. It's the pride of life. Full of the spirit. I'm, I don't have to deliver myself. I'm full of the spirit. I'm going to rely on the Holy Spirit. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. But you're not going to trick me. You're not going to trick me. Y'all want your way. But that's not God's way. Watch what it says. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Now, we just read the scripture, five of Hebrews, that he learned obedience, not through prayer. Y'all ain't going to like this. He didn't learn obedience through the laying on of hands. He didn't learn obedience through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Y'all not, y'all, I, 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 y'all not liking it. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't learn obedience because of the denomination that he was a part of, because he was a Jew, because he was born of the virgin. He didn't learn obedience from that. He did not learn obedience by being affirmed publicly in water. No. He didn't learn obedience by being baptized by John to fulfill righteousness. No. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. The testing of Luke 4, before he could emerge to do the will of God, this, this is where he learned obedience. Folks, y'all don't want to learn obedience because you don't want to suffer. And if you never learn obedience, you'll never mature. You are not mature. Every area of your life has to be spiritually tested. Put that in the chat. Every area of my life must be spiritually tested. My emotional life, my sex life, my mental, emotional life, my financial life, my, my family life, my relational life, every part of my life, I can only learn obedience through the things I suffer. Come on here, Dr. Adams. I cannot, I cannot get past the suffering, the dis. And it will always come in these three areas. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. And pride of life is where we flunk the worst. Now, can't say that for everybody. Some of y'all keep flunking in the area of your flesh. Your lust, your appetites. You are not drawn away. You are drawn away by your own lust. When you're physically sick a long time. Come on, Carla. When you're going through things, that's the lust of your flesh. The lust of your flesh. The lust of the eye. When you see uh, others uh, doing well and you compare yourself. The lust of the eye. The lust of the eye. Comparative thinking. Trying to be something when it's not your measurement. Not your season. And you frustrate it all the time. The lust of the eye. Ooh, shut up. The lust of the eye. Every area of your life must be tested for maturity. Preaching does not. Listen to me. You don't, you don't mature because you hear good preaching. You don't mature because you go to a great church. 
You don't mature because you graduated from seminary. You don't mature because you make a lot of money. You don't mature. You only mature through the things you suffer and you learn obedience. It is your ego. Good God Almighty. It is your ego. And listen, Jesus was human, just like the rest of us. But he relied on Holy Spirit when his ego was being tested. Lust of the flesh, external. Lust of the eye, external. Pride of life, internal. Make you mad for no reason because you see others doing what you are not called to do or gifted to do or not doing it the way it ought to be done. Listen, and you, some of us just have to admit, I miss God on that. I just miss God. It's the, love, it's the pride of life that keeps you trying to be a victim in it. No, you just miss God. You just did not hear from God. Your voice was louder than God's voice. Okay? So now in the things that you suffer, you got to learn obedience. You got to get back to, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you saying? I, 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 obviously, it wasn't what I was saying. So what are you saying? And that is now where we get in the spirit of pride. And the spirit behind this hope, the agenda behind the pride of life is self-destruction. It's self-destruction. You don't want to admit, I miss God. I just, that was what I wanted. I thought, and I put that before the Lord and I struck out to go do it. I started a church I shouldn't have. I moved where I shouldn't have. I married who I shouldn't have. I got involved in stuff I shouldn't have. And it was the pride of life. It's my ego. And my ego is what makes me try to stay in it without taking ownership of my, my wrongful choice. But that's how you're being tested. You're being tested, not that you made a bad decision, but that you won't own it and allow Holy Spirit to lead you where he wants to lead you because of your ego. Because you told everybody. You told everybody this is what the Lord said. You told everybody this is what I want to do. You told everybody, but now it ain't working. And it was never going to work. So now you're being tested in the pride of life. Listen to me carefully. Behind the pride of life is the agenda of self-destruction. Notice what the text says. I'm not going to push you. You throw yourself down. Listen, folks. Listen, folks. Listen. Listen. Listen, <laughs> throw yourself down from here. And if you be the son of God, the angels will come get you. You got to be crazy. You're going to make me destroy myself. See, you got to ask that question. You got this. Am I, am I just, listen, it ain't the church. I told the pastor the other night, the church ain't the problem. You're the problem. It ain't the people. You're the problem. They hired a coach. To get them to the win. And you haven't done it. You haven't delivered. Don't blame them. Stop blaming. Stop acting like you. Like you in some kind of warfare. No. And your capacity. Because you resist the Holy Ghost. Is not growing. Now I can help you. But it ain't going to be comfortable. Listen. You can't learn obedience. Because you're an intercessor. You don't learn obedience because you have a prayer life. You don't learn obedience until you are tested and suffering. Not you'll walk around angry. You'll walk around bitter. You'll walk around selfish. You'll walk around arrogant because you want people to think that you heard when you didn't. And it's all right. Say that was me. That 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 wasn't the Holy Ghost. Behind this pride of life, it is the worst, folks. It's the worst. It's the worst. But if you pass this test, watch what it says. Jesus returned, verse 14, 
to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. He returned to the place of his notoriety and his success in the power of the Spirit. You want to learn obedience through preaching. You want to learn obedience through making money. You want to learn obedience to go into church and serve it. No, you learn obedience through the things you suffer and succeed well in the test. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Listen, folks, y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all got to hear this. This is what's killing us. This is what has the church weak. This is what has the people of God weak. I told my son, Pastor David, see, you ain't got to do this by yourself. You have never, you have never been alone. I've been here the whole time watching you struggle, watching you suffer. I'm right here. Ego. And then you got to know some of y'all still playing to the old guard. Some of y'all still got a point to prove to the old guard. You still playing to the wrong people. You still looking for affirmation from the wrong people. Some of y'all keep me around like a, a comfortable pair of socks. Whenever your feet start hurting you, you try to add me. You. You don't want me to really guide you. You don't really, it, 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 I'm just good enough to be a comfortable pair of socks. But when I give you an instruction from the Lord, but I tell you that ain't the way to go. You should try this. You should try that. You don't want to hear that because all I am to you is a comfortable pair of socks. It's a 51 year old warrior, baby. And I'm telling you right now, the way you're going ain't good. I'm telling you right now, you, 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 want, you want to hang on to me. You want to be associated with me. People say, the Lord told me you're my bishop. The Lord told me that you're my apostle. The Lord told me that you're my mother. Uh-uh. You, you, you want the attachment, but you don't want the leadership. You don't want me to get in your stuff. You don't want me to lead you out of your complacency. You don't want me to show you the error because if I'm going to be in that position, God's going to download the things that you're doing that I need to help you improve on. You don't want that. The pride of life. Just the pride of life. And when I tell you it's wrong, when I tell you don't do it, and you still do it, don't get mad at me. No, because I warned you. Now you're in the test. You got to go through it. Some of you, you, you know, a, a, a good, comfortable pair of socks you wear at home. You, you don't wear them out. You know, you you put those on when you in your intimate places and uh huh, yeah, yeah. But you don't, you don't want me to be a, 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 a ring around your neck. You don't want to rip. No, I know Bishop Paul. I know the Apostle. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm watching you in error. I'm wa watching you in your spiritual immaturity. You want the attachment but not the accountability. Okay. Okay. And I tell you, I tell you, that, that ain't it. Go this way. Don't go that way. Don't get that degree. Get this one. Pride of life. Pride of life. But okay, go ahead on. Then when you get in it, and it, and it starts biting, you and it starts choking you and you start losing air that's when the enemy jump in and say now throw yourself down destroy yourself because we lust for the wrong stuff we're playing to the wrong crowd no you you don't really want i'm just a comfortable pair of socks uh-huh but you know that bishop, she 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 comes she come she comes come strong. You know she come hard. Uh, uh, no, but you learn obedience. <laughs> they don't want me cutting him. They want the association. They want to be able to throw my name out there. They don't want me. They don't want no real accountability. 
And, and, and I'm telling you, I'm teaching y'all the Holy Spirit. I'm teaching you the ways of the Spirit. I'm, te I'm teaching you. When I say to you, don't wear that in the pulpit. I don't want to see that on you. you <laughs> what I say, I told one of my babies, I said, put a slip on. Don't you wear that in the pulpit. What are you doing? See, because when you have been matured, you can look back and see where others need to mature. Listen, 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 folks. This pride of life, you're going to need the Holy Spirit to give you the advantage over the pride of life. That is the most cumbersome. That is the most tormenting. That is the most uh, uh, deliberate, the, uh, debilitating, the most debilitating. That is the most... Uh, uh, it is insidious, it is consistent, and it's the one that you always going to have to conquer. It's the pride of life. The pride of life. Pride of life. And I'm telling you, many believers in this hour are not doing well with this. I gotta go. I gotta go. Holy Spirit gives me the advantage over the pride of life, but I got to rely on it. I got to rely on it. I got to rely on the resources. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to rely. I got to check in. I got to stay in it. I got to take it because this is an area of my immaturity that in the long run, compromise my effectiveness in the end time move of God. I gotta go. <laughs> Y'all share this on your page. Love you so much. We're gonna get this done. Come on, let's get to Pentecost. Let's get to Pentecost. Let's get to the dispensation of maturity. Holy Spirit, activate. I gotta go. <laughs> Hallelujah.